Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty, and I am back with three brand new Spring Easter Farmhouse Rustic Decor pieces for you today. I'm excited, so let's just jump right into DIY number one. I'm going to be using these two terracotta pots. The large one is from Dollar Tree, the small one is from Joann's. I have my Folk Art in Nutmeg and my Dixie Bell Fluff. I have this little bowl from Dollar Tree, they came in a two-pack. I have these florals from... I think the at-home store. I have these really soft pastel speckled eggs from Joann's. I will not be using the larger neutral colored eggs. And I'm going to be using half of this cocoa liner from Dollar Tree. I've already cut it in half and already um, separated it, kind of pulled it apart. We are making a nest. This came out so cute. I absolutely love it. And I hope you guys do too. This liner is so easy to use. I've never used it before. And it is awesome. I really love it. It is better than using the reindeer moss or the Spanish moss to make a nest. Those work, you know, they get the job done, but they're really messy. They just crumble and break apart and fall apart. And you really got to squish them together. And this is so much nicer. It holds its shape. It leaves very little mess or fallout. And I absolutely love it. The nest comes out looking very realistic very organic and just like you would find in nature, <clears throat> excuse me, like you would find in nature and it is so pretty. So after getting my coconut husk glued to the little plastic bowl, using my low temp on my glue setting, I'm going to use some of the Spanish moss. I'm not going to use any of the reindeer moss because I felt like the reindeer moss was too green, but the Spanish moss adds more texture, more dimension, a little more color, makes it look a little more earthy, and just like a real bird made it. it. It's just so cute. I can't say that enough. I love how this came out, and it really truly was a struggle to choose my favorite. This one almost won, but it's not my favorite, so if you want to know which one is, you're going to have to keep watching, and as always, comment down below. Let me know which one is your favorite of the three that I'm bringing you today. So now that I've got my coconut husk all glued, uh, glued down and I've got my Spanish moss glued down, I'm going to go in with these really pretty pink florals, little branches and flowers, which is perfect for this. And I'm going to get those added in. I'm just tucking them into the coconut husk. And then I'm going back in with some of the Spanish moss and covering up the little in pieces of the floral that you can see. I don't want those to show. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the coconut husk and cover the Spanish moss a little bit with that. And this is just, just really cute. One of the nurses at work already spoke for it, so I'm going to take it to her. But I am going to make another one for myself because I really, really like this. Just getting everything glued into place. And now I'm going to put my three little eggs in there. And I thought about using one of the eggs from Dollar Tree, but it was too big. So it just looked odd in the nest with the smaller eggs. But don't worry, we'll be using it in a DIY coming up in this video. So I just set the eggs in there and set it aside. I have not glued them in yet. And now I'm going to work on my terracotta pots. I'm going to glue these two together and make a stand. I'm using Gorilla Glue around the edges and hot glue in the middle of that smaller pot and then gluing it to the bottom of the larger pot. Now I'm going to go in with my Dixie Belle Fluff and I'm going to give this pot a very heavy dry brush of the Dixie Belle Fluff. I'll go back in in the Folk Art Nutmeg and I will dry brush on top of that and then go back in one more time with the Dixie Belle and dry brush on top of the nutmeg. I'm just going back and forth between these two colors until I get it to where I like it, until it is very uh, pleasing to my eye.
I'm just going to take that leftover paint on the brush and brush down inside of the pot, just making sure if you can see inside of it, which you really can't, that you wouldn't see the terracotta so much. So now I'm going to place my nest onto the little stand that I've made, and I want it to sit at an angle. I want it to sit tilted so you could see down inside of the nest. I'm taking my hot glue and attaching my eggs to the nest, but... They all fell out. <laughs> They're laying right there on the table. You guys, these eggs have some kind of plastic coating on them, and that's what gives them their matte finish and look. So you have to hold them down for a little bit to get them to stick. So once I got those glued into the pot, I went back in and I added some of the moss to the back of the pot where you could see in between the nest and the pot, just filling it in, making it seamless. And this is so cute. Here is finished DIY number one. I absolutely love it, and I hope you guys do too. It's very simple, very easy, and very organic. I can't get over how it looks so real. If you have not used the coconut husk or cocoa liner to make a bird's nest, give it a try. And if you hear my dog back barking in the background, she's outside barking at whoever is walking around. Moving on to DIY number two, I have these yellow florals. Um, not sure where they came from, probably Hobby Lobby. I have some white lilac from Dollar Tree, yellow wildflower Dollar Tree, lamb's ear Walmart that I won't be using, hello word from Hobby Lobby, this beautiful daisy burlap from Dollar Tree, raffia from my stash that I will not be using. I have ribbon from Dollar Tree. Nope, the all fray comes from Joann's and the burlap and lace comes from Hobby Lobby. I'll be using my apple barrel in white and sunny yellow. And I have these big, beautiful wooden letters that I picked up from Joann's. They were $2.47 per letter. And the minute I saw those two wooden U's, I thought bunny ears. And I knew, I knew I had to make a nice, thick, large, chunky bunny with a little bit of a farmhouse twist to it. Um, I just knew I had to create that. So I started looking through the letters to find an O. I couldn't find one. I found a Q. And I just cut it. I cut the um, the long piece off in the center or that little short piece that makes the Q. I just cut that piece off and sanded it down, painted it with my white paint, and then I sanded it down with my sander, giving it that distressed look that I love. I took some one and a quarter inch nails, and I attached those ears to the O, or the Q, or the circle, or the bunny head, whatever you guys want to call it. <laughs> that is what it is. And after I did that, I took some of my daisy burlap this is so cute i love this burlap it is brand new to dollar tree this year it came in bumblebee blue polka dot pink polka dot plain and then this daisy is what i found and i got one of each so i took that burlap and i just stapled it to the center of the o just to add some farmhouse cuteness and texture and then i took my Hello Word from Hobby Lobby. I painted it in my sunny yellow. And I'm going to attach it with wood glue and hot glue. And I'm going to go back and dry brush it with some of the Apple Barrel White just to make it look distressed a little bit. I then took one of those little tiny wooden flowers that Dollar Tree came out with this year for spring. They have the wheelbarrow, the picket fence, the little flowers. I took one of those. I painted it to mimic the daisy. I took a little piece of yellow foam and I hot glued it in, in the center to make the daisy. And I took a little bit of boxwood greenery from one of my floral picks from Walmart and I added it for the leaves. And then I just hot glued it to the word hello. I love these little bitty details that make your DIY pop. Now I'm going to take my florals. I'm going to get them all cut apart using my wire cutters. And then I'm going to bundle them together 
using some jute twine. I love doing this because it makes it easier to place once you have them bundled together. Once I get them bundled together, I'm just going to use my stapler and staple them at the bottom of the ear on this bunny piece. This is going to be hanging on one of my doors. I can't decide if I want it on the front door or on my back door, but it's going to be hanging on a door in this house somewhere. I want to take this time to say welcome, welcome, welcome to all my brand new subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you for choosing D's Cute and Crafty. And to all my ride or dies who have been with me since I started, you guys know I love you. Thank you so much for coming back. So you guys know how I make my bows. If you've been watching me for a while, I take my ribbon, I make some loops, I stack it together, I make my tails, I pinch it all together, and then I tie it up with some twine. This is finished DIY number two. After I got my bow all made and uh, tied up with the twine, I put a few little staples in it to get it secured, and then I tied it on with jute twine. So it's tied on and stapled on to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. This one is hands down my favorite of the three. I absolutely love how this turned out. It is it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. A bigger, thicker, chunkier piece. I don't think I've ever made something this substantial with wood before. Moving on to DIY number three and the last DIY of this video. I'll be using the same white chalk paint, one of these candle wreath rings. I'll be using chicken wire from Dollar Tree and bunny ribbon from Joann's, farmhouse ribbon and twine from Dollar Tree, a thrifted picture frame from the Goodwill, and these neutral colored eggs from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to start out by taking my frame apart, setting the glass and the backing aside for later use. I don't know what I'll use it for, but I save everything. I'm going to take these little pen pieces out. And this is really good quality wood. It is tongue and groove on the ends or on the corners. It's really good. I'm going to wipe it down with a baby wipe because it is thrifted. And it did look a little smudgy. A little, little bit of dust on there. So I'm just going to wipe it off with a baby wipe and dry it with a paper towel before painting it with the white acrylic paint from Apple Barrel. Just going to give it one rough coat. You guys know I'm not going to really give it more than that because I'm going to distress it anyway. Going in with my Gator Sander, I'm just going to make it look old and weathered because you know I love it. Now that that's done, I'm going to go in with my chicken wire. I was so excited to find chicken wire at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree just recently started carrying it and we don't have it all the time. So when I found it, I got three rolls of it. I am so excited about this. So I'm just getting it open and I'm going to save that paddle wire that they had it um, bound with. They had wrapped it with the paddle wire. I'm going to put that aside because you know I'm going to use it for something. I'm just getting this pulled apart, trying to straighten it out and flatten it out. You guys, be careful when using this because you know you will get stuck. I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't get stuck, but I can easily see how you could. So just be careful with it. Put on gloves if you need to. I'm just glad I have on a long sleeve sweatshirt so I could use my arms to help hold this chicken wire down until I can get it stapled into place. Again, this is a very good thrifted wood frame. It took these staples effortlessly. I'm going to have to go thrifting again and see if I can find any more. Just cutting off the excess using my wire cutters. cutting off all those little pieces at the top and I'm just blocking them with my hand because I don't want them to shoot all over my craft room and end up on the floor and then end up in my foot. So I'm just blocking them and you can see I have a little stack of them on the table. I'm going to just 
uh, swipe those off and throw them away, but I just want to keep track of where they all went. Now I'm going to take some of this farmhouse ribbon and go around the edges of that frame and the chicken wire just to make sure I don't have any pointy sharp pieces sticking out. Now I'm going to take this candle wreath and I'm going to take all the geraniums off of there. That's not the look that I'm going for. So we're going to get rid of all of that. And now I'm going to take those neutral colored eggs and I'm going to hot glue them to this I guess this is grapevine wreath at this point. I'm just going to cut the eggs in half because they were too big and too bulky to sit on their hole. And I'm just going to brush off any of the loose styrofoam. I will be using my reindeer moss in this DIY just to give the eggs something to hold on to. I initially started gluing just the egg directly to the wreath, but it just it wasn't holding the way that I want it to. So then I decided to glue some of the moss on the wreath and then glue the egg to the moss and then make sure I glued each egg to each other if that makes any sense at all. You guys see what I'm doing. I am trying to make sure that the eggs hold on to this little bitty wreath. So I glued the eggs together and they held up very well. I like how this one turned out. It's very farmhouse rustic and you could leave it up all year. If you change out your ribbon and you don't use bunny ribbon, this is just a beautiful neutral farmhouse piece that can stay up in your home all year round and I love how this turned out just making a bow I left a little space at the top of the wreath to attach a bow I'm going to take some of my bunny ribbon and attach it to the wreath so that I can attach the wreath to the frame I'm making sure that you could see one full bunny at the top so that you do know that this is an Easter decor piece. I'm going to take my bow and attach it to the opening at the top of the wreath where I did not put an egg. I left an opening there. And then I'm just going to staple the ribbon to the frame. And this one is done. I'm going to cut off the excess ribbon in the back. You can either use it as a leaner or put a hanger on it. Whichever way you decide to go, it's going to be gorgeous. All done. Here's DIY number three. All finished. You guys, if you've made it to this far in the video, I thank you so much for sticking with me. Leave me an Easter basket or just type the word basket if you don't have one. I am so thrilled that you're here. I'm glad that you stuck around. Don't forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. They share me out a little bit more so others can enjoy it as well. And it helps my channel grow. That's how people find me when YouTube shares me out. So thank you so much for giving me that thumbs up. And here is the final reveal of everything that I've made for you guys today. I love each and every one. It was so hard choosing a favorite, but I'm gonna put them in order of my favorites right now. Number one is definitely my Hello Bunny door hanger. Number two is going to be my bird's nest. And number three is the egg wreath the farmhouse egg wreath I love it everything came out so nice and it was so easy to do and I love that it it just hits all the all the boxes for me it checks all the boxes all the bells and whistles I love the little pop of color in that egg um, in that bird's nest I love the rustic look of the chunky wood on the bunny door hanger and that little chicken wire 
picture frame. <laughs> that thing is so adorable. I love that I can keep it up all year just by changing out my ribbon. I hope you guys like everything and I hope you'll recreate some of these. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for choosing these cute and crafty. Thank you for being here. You guys are amazing. I can't do any of this without you. Until I see you in my next one, be blessed, stay safe, and craft something beautiful today. Bye.